We really wanted to watch a documentary about Greg's life, but then we realized that film doesn't exist. We reached out to Greg last year and he jumped on board. We started financing the film independently so we can be true to Greg's story and make it our own way. If you are good at this thing called Google, you can do really good crowdfunding work. I maintain that that is the case. And I like to do audience building from the day that I think of the project I want to make. So it's really s simultaneously you know, happening as I'm thinking of the film, I'm thinking of the audience, and where they are, and how I can find them. And um, the fact that, you know, there's a group of people who you know are doing whether it's synchronized swimming or you know this LGBT uh, diving team in the city that they're going to get really excited about this idea. I made a list that's you know as long as my arm of all the possible intersections of Greg's life um, that I could think of. Right, so he's an Olympian, he's an Olympic champion, he does diving, he's gay, he has HIV, he's left-handed. I mean, it, go to like really go get weird with it, like go there because people who are left-handed really is anyone here left-handed? People who are left-handed, you so love that, right? You have lefty pride. <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing, I swear. So I'm not left-handed. I wouldn't understand, but um, in LGBT, that's right. <laughs> left. It is now. Um, so, you know, he was a dog trainer, he, like, they're just, that make that list, and some of them are very, very big circles of people, and some of them are, and you get, you know, smaller and smaller and smaller, but you can find these folks on the internet, you may not know them personally, um, and you can identify where they are, where they hang out, sometimes it's a physical building, sometimes it's just an online area, and you can go there and say, hey, uh, I think you might be really excited, uh, about this project I'm doing. Uh, let me tell you about it. We timed our release of the Kickstarter campaign with the Summer Olympics. So people talk about Olympians, you know, are, are here and there, but especially every four years. So there became this kind of real swell of uh, interest and excitement in, in Greg, in diving, in the Olympics, and we were able to really kind of hitch our, hitch our campaign to that um, this summer that that might be something to think about and timing your campaign accordingly because people want to be writing articles about this holiday, whatever this is, and that you can actually do really great uh, pitching for the press to get traction and it becomes a really great feedback loop. Um, and then people are very excited to be a part of this with you. This is not new at all. Like I know you went back to what, the 80s? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can go back to Christianity, you know, you know, <laughs> centuries ago, or you could just really, if you think about it, you have the late 1800s, you have the Statue of Liberty was actually crowdfunded, right? So the statue was free from the French, but the base had $150,000 gap, so nearly 50% was not available from investors. So we weren't going to get the statue because there was nowhere to put it. Right? So Joseph Pulitzer, who at the time was working with the New World, president to New York Times, reaches out through his technology called the newspaper in a number of requests and updates called you know, newspapers sent every week. And he actually had people fund it. And he actually didn't even get any rewards or perks or anything. People didn't get anything. They didn't get investment. They didn't get their name on a brick. They didn't get anything. All they got was to be part of something called freedom in America. I was lucky to have a really obsessive um, and very wired uh, digitally audience that was dying to see the film. Um, so through the process of, of making Helvetica, I mean, I, I put up a, uh, started blogging about it like nine months before it came out, and we had a lot of um, things that were, um, we had limited edition prints that the designers did in the film and all the stuff that happened before the film had been released. Um, so we were already building up both kind of funds, but also, you know, um, an email list. My Twitter handle has also always been at Gary Hustwood. It's not at Helvetica the movie, which then when I do the next movie, now I've got to somehow get, okay, everybody, now it's objectified the movie. Um, come on over, you know. I, I've continued just to be me on all these projects. And I think that's one thing if you're building this audience, you want to be able to kind of carry it from project to project. In terms of social media, I think I use it in a, maybe a different way. It's not just about outreach for me. It's also about, um, you know, kind of crowdsourcing information f to, and research and help to make the film and to figure out what the film should be. Um, with Urbanized, we did that a lot. A lot of the projects that are in the film were things that we got from, um, you know, Twitter followers.
on Indiegogo, if you have a video, you'll raise 114% more money than if you don't have a video. The average length of a video that is optimized is about two minutes. Average campaign that hits its target on Indiegogo will hit its target on day 36 of a 47 day long campaign. You can do it up to 120 days, but that's what the data shows. 91% of campaigns will offer perks in return. Those are products, services, or experiences. 9% will never offer anything and still hit their target. 85% of them will offer between three to eight perks. That's the sweet spot, three to eight. We like to say high, medium, and low. Low is $25 or below. Medium is 26 to 100. High is 100 to 500. And then I like to throw out there that you want this ridiculous perk, which is like over five or over $10,000 that you think no one in their right mind would ever actually fund, but it's because it's actually there that they actually get to click it, they'll actually fund that sometimes. So we noticed if you have four more people on your team, you'll raise 70% more money than if you only have one person on your team, okay? If you do an update every five days or less, you'll raise four times more money than if you do an update every 20 days or more. We know hands down, email is your number one tool to convert. Facebook is number two, Twitter is number three. If you get 25% of funding of your campaign within the first week, you're five times more likely to hit your target. So you wanna get off to a good start. One of the tricks people don't really do yet, enough I don't think, um, is this concept of a host committee, which is really a charity concept, right? I'm on the host committee of this charity event. And the only reason they do that is because they want people to come to the charity event. So they have people host the event because they have friends that they'll actually have come to the event. So the smartest thing you could do, because you want to get to that 25% within the first five days, right? So you want to get it started right away, because then it's like, oh, this is hot, and oh, this is a, you know, all interesting. So you just you know, lock it in with a host committee. Why wait till you launch to know that somebody's going to fund? Just have your host committee locked in. It's actually quite easy multipliers. You just get 50 or 100 people, right? even just 50, have them all guaranteed to bring 10 people, potentially give them the movie for free or whatever you want to give them as part of that process. You now have 550 people that funded on day one. That's pretty awesome. Having a great graphic designer on board as early as possible is you know, always a good thing. You want the stuff to look good. Part of this is people are trusting you. You're saying, I'm gonna deliver this in, in a year or longer. And that level of trust is based on what they see. Uh, one thing that um, was, I think, useful, or at least fun for me, for keeping the audience engaged and hopefully uh, pleased about my progress, was I would document the progress of getting the thing done. Right, so it would be this shot of these FedEx envelopes going to the duplicator, and the shot of um, you know the brand new box of DVDs that got shipped to me a little while later, and then you know my friends and I with the stop motion uh, video of us packing up <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of DVDs. So it, it becomes this you know sort of dance that you do, um, and trust is a big part of it, and also just keeping folks engaged. If they ask you these questions, to be sure to you know answer them promptly and let them know what's going on. Like I usually look at it. Um, as if the, uh, the audience, everybody that's following me on Twitter or, or that I'm sending updates to, they're just one more member of the team, just like my editor or my cinematographer or whatever, and I send them the same stuff that I send those people. I'm like, hey, check out this article I just read on the New York Times about what we're doing. Is this interesting? I mean, I, I keep everybody like that in the loop. Or, hey, do you know anybody in Zagreb that uh, got a can of 5D? I mean, we got need to shoot something tomorrow. Um, you know, the same kind of tone I would be using with anybody that I was working with, I'm using with the, the audience. If they're interested in your subject matter, they probably know a lot of it about it, maybe more than, than you know about it. So why not you kind of include them in that, in that mix? Yes, it's a little bit more um, work, but I mean, it's enabling you to do what you're doing, to make your, the film you want to make and, and get it out there.